Go ahead. Dear Judge Morazic, I'm here today to represent my brother, Eric Eugene Richens, whose life was taken in a senseless act of poisoning on March 3rd, 2022. His wife, the defendant, has been accused of committing this crime. If she is found guilty, she has committed the ultimate act of betrayal. Eric is gone and I am brokenhearted. He was my best friend and protector. The feeling of loss is so great it is visceral. And with the sorrow comes wave of panic and not being able to see him again. I can never talk to him, never hug him again, and never more be a part of his life. Eric's world revolved around his family, his love for hunting, the family cattle ranch, and his intense drive as a successful entrepreneur. Being born into the Richens' legacy shaped Eric's formative years and resulted in a lifetime of hard work, dedication, and fierce loyalty. At an early age, Eric learned the joys of keeping horses and cows around. He spent countless hours helping our dad work the ranch, hauling hay, feeding the animals, and mending fences. He loved our family unconditionally and was a devoted son, brother, uncle, and father. Eric was a family man who always strove to be the absolute best father and husband. He was an attentive and loving father to his three sons and a devoted husband to his wife of almost nine years, Corey, the defendant. Eric did absolutely everything in his power to provide his family and his three sons with every possible opportunity to learn, grow, and have fun. He was the coach or assistant coach on all his boys' teams, which included soccer, basketball, and baseball, he spent countless hours coaching and teaching the boys to play aggressive and give it their all. Eric truly cared about every single child he coached and wanted the absolute best for all of them. There was never a dull moment when you were around Eric, whether it was him showing up to a family dinner with no socks or the sleeves torn off of his shirt because he had to make an emergency bathroom stop along the way, or his calling to tell you he rolled the four-wheeler for the upteenth time is stuck and he needs you to come get him. It was never boring. Eric loved to have fun and always wanted to make sure everyone else did as well. He owned almost every motorized toy possible, from four-wheelers and side-by-sides to trucks and snowmobiles, and was so excited to share those with his sons. He had the perfect combination of business sense and foresight. He built a very successful masonry business from the ground up and helped many friends do the same. He had a special ability to build close relationships with everyone he worked with, which really allowed his business to thrive. Eric loved every aspect of his job, but most of all, he loved the people he worked for and those he worked with. Eric faithfully supported organizations that he truly believed in. He never was one that wanted recognition or accolades. He did most things anonymously and without recognition. Eric was a true champion of all people. It did not matter if you were an employee, friend, family, or the next random person walking down the street. If you needed anything, you could count on him. He truly cared about each person he met. Eric loved fully, laughed loudly, and lived life with reckless abandon. He enjoyed great adventures to far off places, but also cherished the small and finer things in life. No obstacle was too great for Eric. He simply viewed each one as a challenge. No peak was too high, and the next adventure was always just around the next bend. Words cannot describe the loneliness and loss that is felt in every heart that was lucky enough to know him. Eric was such an inspiration and role model for us all. His loss has created a Grand Canyon sized hole in this community. Except instead of taking millions of years to slowly form, our worlds change open, overnight. His three boys' entire worlds and their perspectives on life changed. None of our lives will ever be the same. Eric died under horrendous circumstances. I am tormented at the thought of what he endured. I play it out in my mind. I go through the terrible sequence of events. I wonder when he realized he was in mortal danger. I wonder what Corey may have, may have said to him in his last moments. How long was he conscious, knowing he would die? Where were Eric's boys when all of this happened? Did they hear Eric's body fall to the ground? Did they catch a glimpse of their father taking his last breath? It's torture to think of. Why did Eric lose his life? Why did the boys lose their father? Was it because of Corey's greed and desire to get life insurance and other assets? If so, that is abhorrent. 
How could anyone value life, human life so cheaply? I cannot comprehend it. I'm overflowing with grief and, grief and pain at the thought that Eric meant so little to her. If Eric had died because of an illness, he would have been cared for. He could have looked after him and been with him. If he had died because of an accident, people would have tried to help. There would have been kindness. But there's no comfort to be had here. There's no consoling thought in the way Eric died. In his last moments, after being intentionally poisoned, he was faced with betrayal and terror. The thought of it is unbearable. I am haunted by the horror of it. This last year has been a living hell for our family. We have watched as Corey has paraded around portraying herself as a window, widow and victim while trying to profit from the death of my brother. Both by trying to profit from a book about his death and trying to get life insurance and assets that should go exactly where Eric wanted them to, to his voice. Immediately after Eric was killed, Corey told us she could not help us get anything ready for the funeral as she was too distraught with grief. We shortly found out that was not true at all. In fact, she pulled herself together enough to go close on the purchase of a $2 million home, hire a real estate agent, hire an architect to create CAD drawings of the home, hire a lawyer in order to file a lawsuit on Eric's trust, hire a locksmith to come break into and clean out my brother's safe, and attempt to have Eric cremated. She mustered up the strength and resolve to do most of this within 48 hours of his death. Corey assaulted me. I will never forget the look in her eyes when she attacked me that Sunday morning. It was early and had been snowing most of the night. I was just getting ready to leave and heading out to the car when I saw a locksmith in Eric's detached garage starting to drill out his gun safe. I asked Corey multiple times why we could not just call my dad for the code. I could not understand why she was breaking into and ruining Eric's safe. To this, she screamed at me at the top of her lungs, called me some inappropriate things I cannot share with you here, and then told me to get out of her house. It was then that I told her that she could not kick me out of my brother's house. My sister Katie was now the executor of Eric's trust and estate, and just like Eric, she would not want the defendant breaking into his gun safe. Corey looked at me with pure hatred and rage. I was messing up her plan. I was getting in her way. And because of that, she attacked me. She punched me in the face and neck multiple times. It took four people to pull her off me that day. Before the funeral, funeral Corey opened a bank account and asked everyone that was grieving to send her money instead of sending the family cards and flowers. It was not even two weeks after Eric's passing that we were told she had taken down all but one photo of my brother and removed all his clothing from the house. Corey put together a golf tournament in Eric's name two months after his death on what would have been his 40th birthday and told his family, all of us, that we were not allowed to attend. Since Eric's death, it has come to our attention that Corey took out multiple life insurance policies on Eric without his knowledge. It appears that she forged his signature on various documents, assigned herself as Eric's durable power of attorney, inappropriately diverted money from his business to herself, and assigned herself as beneficiary of Eric's portion of our mother's retirement account. I should also no not forget to mention the multiple life insurances she has taken out on the boys. Her most recent business venture was authoring a children's book about how to help grieving children cope with the loss of, a, of the death of a parent. In this book, she had the audacity to use the boys' real names and even use their last family portrait. Her behavior gives me great concern as she has exploited the boys for money and will likely do so again. In addition, Corey has weaponized Eric's children, manipulating my dad to do or not do things by threatening to come in to cut him out of their lives if he, did, if he did not capitulate to her demands. She similarly deprived the boys of contact with myself, my sister, and her daughters unless we agreed to give her the money in Eric's trust, money that Eric wanted to go to his three children. 
As if that were not enough, I have been told that Corey started telling their three little boys that none of Eric's family or friends loved them. She apparently told them none of us cared for them or wanted to be around them, even though that is the exact opposite of what was happening. We all want nothing more than to be there for those three little boys, my nephews, yet Corey has made sure to cut us out of every aspect of their lives. This is all just a brief summary and the start of what our family has been through over the last year. We have scarcely gone a day without finding out some new allegations or evidence regarding something Corey appears to have maliciously done to attack and undermine my brother, his three little boys, and our family. We have all been there since the beginning of Corey's and Eric's relationship. I was there on one of their first dates. We were there at the wedding. We were there when each of the boys were born. We have been there for every birthday party, school graduation, and rodeo. We welcomed her into our family and treated her as one of us. Not only did she betray our brother, it feels as though she has murdered and taken away a part of our souls as well. Because of her actions, there has not been a day that has gone by we have not lived with paralyzing anxiety and fear, worrying for the boys' lives as well as our own. I may be naive, but I never knew evil like this existed. If Corey was in fact willing to kill Eric for money, who's to say that what she will not do, who would be next? Corey was in a desperate financial situation when Eric was killed, and that situation seems even worse now. We understand that she has defaulted on loans and is already a defendant in other lawsuits based on her financial misdeeds. I am truly concerned that she will stop at nothing to dig her way out of the problems, including murder. She seems devoid of moral sensibility, and there is no telling what she will do if she is released. Judge Mrazic, her fate lies in your hands. Please do not allow Corey to use the fraudulent life insurance proceeds to get out on bail. That would be morally reprehensible. Please do not allow Corey to take advantage and make a mockery of our justice and legal system anymore. She has done enough. Please do not allow Corey to hurt Eric's memory, our family, friends, and community anymore. We have been through enough. Please do not give Corey the opportunity to hurt Eric's three boys anymore. They have lost enough and have been through enough. Since Eric's death, we have learned and unfortunately are continually reminded that Corey is desperate, greedy, and extremely manipulative. If she gets out on bail, I will be afraid not only for my own life and those of all of my family, but most importantly for the lives of Eric's three sons. Our family has already suffered enough. Please do not let Corey out on bail where she will be a risk to do further harm. Please protect what Eric put his life on the line for his three boys. Thank you. Maybe thank you.